So far you've seen how to export a printed circuit board from Mentor Expedition to ODB++ and how to import this ODB++ database to ANSYS SI Wave. You also learned how to modify the component values using either a data file or an XML control file. In this video we'll import the ODB++ database to ANSYS HFSS 3D layout and to ANSYS space claim. I'll also modify the component properties in HFSS 3D layout. In ANSYS Electronics Desktop, go to the File menu and select Import ODB++. Navigate through your folders to locate the ODB++ directory. You can either select the TGZ file or the uncompressed ODB directory. If you select the directory, press the Choose Folder button. This opens the ODB++ Import dialog. Let's expand this dialog. You can select the layers you want to import. We'll select all of them. All the net names are distinct as specified during the ODB++ export process and expedition. If you want, you can also use a control file to modify how HFSS 3D layout will determine the component values. So press the Import Control File button. Select the XML file for this board. Click Open. Now press OK. The translator extracts all the nets, layers, materials, and the component properties with their correct values. The PCB appears in HFSS 3D layout. Select the Layers button to expand it. Make all the layers, traces, components, vias, and pads visible. You can also make the non-stack-up layers visible. The Layers window automatically hides itself when you click outside it. There are different viewing modes available in 3D layout. One of them is Default. There's also Solid, as shown here. Open the folder in the Project Manager window. Also open Analysis. This board should be ready for simulation in 3D layout. Before you run any simulation, it's a good idea to check the component RLC values and the layer stackup to be sure they were imported accurately. The resistors in the first family, R5, R18, and so on, are 0 ohms as specified in Expedition. For the second family, all the resistors are 100 kilo ohms. R7 is 1 kilo ohm. Let's check out the values of these resistors in the Bill of Materials report. Clearly, the values of the resistors were imported correctly. Let's look at the capacitors now. C10 of the first family of capacitors in SI Wave is 0.01 microfarads. C40 of the second family is 0.047 microfarads. C51 and C53 are 0.1 microfarads. C182 is 1 microfarad. C228 is 33 picofarads. Let's also check some inductors. L9 is 0.33 microhenries. L10 of the same family is also 0.33 microhenries. The values of the capacitors and inductors are the same as displayed in this excerpt from the Bill of Materials spreadsheet. We see that C10 is 0.01 microfarads, C51 and C53 are 0.1 microfarads, and so on. The values of the inductors also match the ones we just saw in HFSS 3D layout. If you didn't use the XML control file, then some of the components might have had their values reset to 3D layout's defaults. You can still modify the component values by using a component mapping data file. I described this data file in the previous video. You just need to right-click Circuit Elements, click the Import Component Mapping File option from the shortcut menu, and find the correct data file to update the RLC values. Open the Edit Layers window in HFSS 3D layout. Select All Layers. Change the units to millimeters. If you compare the stackups between ANSYS HFSS 3D Layout and Mentor Expedition, you can see that all the layers, thicknesses, and material properties were translated accurately. The reasons I stated in the previous video for the differences in material names and comparable thickness values are applicable to 3D Layout as well. In other words, 3D Layout, like SIWave, also reads in the material properties as specified in the ODB++ database that is exported from Expedition. Clearly, the translation from Mentor Expedition to ANSYS HFSS 3D layout through the ODB++ route is accurate. Now we'll import the ODB++ file to ANSYS space claim. This is the route that you would follow if you were going to perform an analysis in ANSYS Mechanical or ANSYS Fluent. Bring up the space claim options window. Expand File Options. Select ECAD. Ensure the import mode in the ECAD File Options panel is set to Layer Topology. This will import the PCB in a simplified form. Now you can just drag and drop the TGZ file from Expedition into SpaceClaim. The translator succeeded for this ODB++ file. 
select the folder Design 1. The Share Topology option should be None. However, the Share Topology option must be set to Share for the PCB. This option will ensure that the mesh is connected if this board is used for a mechanical or a CFD analysis. Expand the Turbot folder and uncheck Components to make the footprints invisible for the board. Maneuver the board and place it so you can view the board along its thickness as shown. To do this, you can make use of the Spin, Pan, and Zoom options available in Space Claim on the bottom right of the toolbar. Press the Shift key and zoom in to view the edges of the board as shown. Select all the layers as shown. Alternatively, you can also do Control A. You can see there are 25 bodies in all. Clearly, all the layers were translated accurately in Space Claim. This concludes this demonstration. In the next part, we'll translate ECAD geometries from mentor pads to ANSYS.